the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, my friends. This episode in, in Bethany, it's one of the greatest uh, revelations in all of the Gospels, and I love it that we, get, that we get it on the Feast of All Saints. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, uh, they, are, they are well known to us, as are the stories of uh, you know, Jesus coming to visit Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Remember, Martha's making the dinner and Mary's hanging out. Yeah? This story, where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And who could forget, right, of Mary taking the oil, right, and breaking it and anointing Jesus' head before his burial, the story of the woman with the alabaster jar. Do you remember that one? I don't know about you, but um, I can remember in years past hearing sermons uh, that unfailingly exhort me to tend to my inner Martha. Right? Um, and instead to strive to channel my inner Mary to choose the better part. The story before us today is both light and dark, where Jesus weeps 
and we are present with all the others when the stone is rolled away into a yawning darkness. And then Lazarus comes forth. My friends, this is no ordinary tale, but a foretaste, I think, of a promise kept in faith. The emotion of the scene is palpable, especially when you slow down the reading of it, right? You take your time and let the words kind of come as they may. Mary kneels before Jesus. She kneels. She comes up. I can't imagine what that was like. And those around her, too, are weeping. And they are weeping because Lazarus was loved. Lazarus was deeply loved. And Jesus is greatly disturbed, right? He sees all of these people overcome with emotion. And he is overcome by emotion, too. The pain of the moment is amplified when some of them are overheard as asking. Like there's a question mark in the text. But I kind of like to think that it was pleading. Right? The voice coming from the shadows that said, you know, couldn't this man, couldn't he, who made blind men see, couldn't he have kept his friend from dying? And though the scripture places this question on the lips of those who are in the shadows of the story, I think it's a very personal question for us. One that I would guess many of us have asked ourselves at the bedsides of those we have loved and lost. threshold of death remains the most hallowed of ground of all. I think a space where uncertainty and trust reach out together. Whereupon they embrace rests our eternal hope. And in that hope with the saints and souls before us we remember those we have loved and lost by name, especially these past few weeks. Michael Brannon, Michael Smith, Jim Hess. And those we name now, Kay Ferris. Friends, each of those precious souls, those named and those within you, 
they know no separation from God. The souls of the faithful departed know that when you are in the eternal, you are outside of nothing. A state in which Christians of old called the beatific vision, where the eye with which you see God is God's eye seeing you. They are embraced in the purest circle of love and are at once everywhere and nowhere, remaining every moment completely present here and now. We are not alone. The shadow of that truth lies in the fact that all of us will be present to or at some point in our life be forced to acknowledge our own mortality and the mortality of those we love. And this is, this is different, mind you, of knowing that we are human and that one day will be our last. The threshold whereupon we meet our own mortality shapes every day from that moment on. It is an encounter that changes you and one that reveals the truth that all of us will experience what Lazarus has fully known and what we hope for. Faith, I want you to take heart, my friends, because sometimes what the scripture doesn't say is more revealing than what they do. For instance, in the dialogue that's before us this morning, one voice remains silent, right? One voice that could speak to all that we long to know. What happens to those that we love when they die? happens to us. Lazarus knows. For us, Lazarus represents not only silence, but absence. And the hard reality that surrender in the end Surrender to the unknown marks one of the most fundamental transitions in our lives. For there upon that threshold waits for all of us a crisis of faith and love like no other. And into it, we all shall go. All of us. The story picks up again with Jesus approaching the tomb. Take away the stone, he says. No. No, Martha says. With life everlasting before the threshold of the tomb. Still we fear. And Jesus looks at Martha and he says, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God?
Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, the first to know what Adam, the first of us, knew on Holy Saturday. The command that he would hear. I command you, Jesus says, awake, sleeper. Awake. I have not made you to be held a prisoner in the underworld. Arise from the dead. I am the life of the dead. Arise, O man, work of my hands. Arise, you who were fashioned in my image. Rise, let us go hence, for you are in me, and I am in you, and together we are one undivided person. This is the command that has been heard by those that we love and see no longer. This is the command that was heard by my parents and yours. And this is the command that will one day be before us.